So you learned a little bit about the nitrate reductase, reductase assay. So let's conduct it. It takes us far less time to conduct the assay than it does to explain all the science behind it. The most important thing is to make sure that you have a test tube containing nitrate broth and not nutrient broth. They look indistinguishable, but what is different about this broth is that it has a high concentration of nitrate available for the microorganism. To inoculate this tube, we are going to flame our loop. We're gonna collect our street plate from the previous week. We're gonna cool our loop by putting it in an area where there is no bacteria. And then we will collect one colony, take off the loop, and we'll inoculate into the broth. This. Another thing we might want to do with any of the glass tubes that you're using is we can do a quick flame back and forth and that prevents a little bit of um, potential microbial contamination. Now your tube is ready to be in incubated for two days at 37 degrees. That's what all of our cultures are going for. So I'll head over to the incubator. <laughs> Now we're going to look at two samples that have been growing um, in, in, um, after two days. And um, to determine whether nitrite has accumulated and replaced the initial, initial nitrate, we are going to make use of these two reagents. We call one nitrate A and one nitrate B. I can take out the tubes and leave them off because we're going to throw out these cultures after we're done. So to utilize these tubes, they have an open dropper on the top and they have a glass vial on the inside. So you're going to crack them. That will break the glass and now you don't have to take off the lid. You can just drop it into the solution. It requires kind of a supposed to kind of count the drops. I'm going to say there were about four there. One, two, three, four. Maybe I'll do five in each. So that's nitrate A. Nitrate B, we're going to follow the same steps. And we're going to go one, oh. <laughs> one, two, oop. One, two, three, four. It's a little harder to control than I thought. So you mix them and you're looking for a color change. If you feel like there might be a slight color change, you can even add more. You just want to make sure that your, your nitrate A and your nitrate B are at a one-to-one -one concentration. And it, it's not, as you can tell, you don't have to be perfect about it. So see how I saw that little change now i'm seeing more so that tells me to just kind of keep adding ultimately we're looking for a kind of a blood red color change but any color change any pink color is um is considered positive so in this case this one was uninoculated so i know that it's not going to have any nitrate accumulate so in this case, we see a tan color that tells us that nitrite is not present. However, we know the microorganism could have fully um, reduced nitrogen into nitrogen gas. Um, and so the enzyme might still pre be present. Now this, this guy here, which was an E. coli, was able to accumulate nitrite in the media, which means the, the bacteria has to have the enzyme nitrate reductase. And that means that it has to undergo this specific type of anaerobic respiration.